And you, you're the worst, Basil. How dare you still show your face to me after what you did? <laughs> I couldn't tell if that step forward was like, like, what was behind that. <laughs> Aubrey, I... Get away from me. <gasps> this game has serious content warnings. Welcome back to Amori. Last time we played, we got... A hero sandwich. It's not in our pocket. <laughs> and we're on our way to see Hero, who I haven't seen yet. It's very exciting. Um, I think there's also a random lake back here. Doesn't look like it. The real world is always interesting with more. Oh yeah, you! I need to defeat you. <laughs> it sounds awful, but it's like, I don't care what you're telling me. I just need to defeat you in this random Pokemon version of a game. It's like this weird contrast between like the regular art of the game and then this art of the game. <sighs> There's like a weird part of me that's forgotten how rock paper scissors works. So when the little guy is like heart, not heart, <laughs> and the little um tofu character when the little Josh character is like, um, cause it's like what, Smuggler Josh? When the character does the the rock, I'm sitting there going wait, rock beats paper, right? No, no it doesn't, Danielle. It's been a very long time since I've actually played rock, paper, scissors. That one won though. <gasps> I think I tried this like twice last time. Are you okay? There, there, you take a good rest now. That was fun. Thanks for challenging me. I guess I need to train Rose Lad a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I feel satisfied with my life without defeating a child in a child's game. <laughs> uh, do I have trash? No? I don't. <gasps> is this a trap? This feels like a trap. I found a dollar? <laughs> Are you sure, game, that Lotger isn't just finding things because the game told me it was critical? It was. Wow. I can't even make a joke. <sighs> I'm just gonna drop that where it was. Um, okay. Basil's house. Nothing else going on. And you're looking for your dog. Oh yeah, that's right. I have the fish and the dog. Where is the dog? Could the dog be in the cemetery? Um, oh, I can't. Can't run to the church. Hello? Oh, the pastor doesn't have one. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> um... So, no dog. Hmm. Still really sad. There's bread here. It smells toasty. I mean, so much of this is also really sad because it's so recent. Like... Whenever you see fresh flowers at a grave, you know that someone's been there recently, and someone ca really cares for that person. <sighs> Death sucks. Grief is something that we all deal with in some way, shape, or form. Like, we are all touched by it as part of this human experience. I say that after just, like, running around being like, Is the dog here? <laughs> uh... <gasps> I found the dog! Oh, the dog is good dog. Go home, dog. Let's go to the artist. I was just there. Poor Sunny. Like, if Sunny has been inside for years, like, literal years, this would be so much exercise. Like, this would hurt. It would be sore. You would have that, like, delayed onset muscle soreness, that Dom stuff. Like, you would just hurt. And, and with all this walking, it might even be the kind of hurt that, like, is in your butt. And then it hurts to sit down, and then it hurts to get up. Oh, I'm not saying that from experience. Oh, 
Lucas. Don't worry me like that. Hey, did you send Lucas back here? I'm sorry for the trouble. Here, take this. I got a paintbrush. Anything cool in here? Well, it would help if I didn't walk into the stool. The painting is still unfinished. What do you do with a paintbrush? Oh, it is. Okay. Feels very cool to carry around. Okay, but like... These don't change anything. So, the items, like, replicate what happens in, um, the dream world, but they don't, they don't mean anything. Hmm. So there's no point in them except for the actual, like, pet rock that Sunny has. So I guess the only thing left to do is the cat. Yeah, be decent fish. Oh. Cat left a gift for you. Please don't be poop. Okay, well, I'm gonna go get money from this trash that these animals keep leaving me. I don't. Shouldn't animals leave you love and like life satisfaction, and joy and happiness? Not trash. I mean, they also leave you trash, but usually it's like, um. It, like, where it's supposed to be, like, in the kitty litter box. <laughs> Kel, I will pet your dog. Before we go in, I should probably mention that my mom is going to be a little mad about me taking so long with the groceries. I was supposed to bring everything back around noon, but I got carried away with other stuff, and, well, you know how it goes. But anyways, I thought of a solution for this. So, I think you should walk in first. That way she'll see you first and get all excited. And most importantly, she'll forget to yell at me. See, it's a win-win for everyone. Got, got it? Okay, let's go. Um, I'm gonna pet your dog. Hey, no. <gasps> the dog's name is Hector! The dog's name is Hector! That's where the name came from. Wait. I doesn't count little several Hectors. Am I a good boy? Oh, you're always a good boy. Would you like to pet the dog? Yes! Dog rolled over! The dog seems content. I love this. <gasps> this is just the rest of the video right here. Mm -hmm. There is no more video. You're so cute! And doggo. Oh, you thought I was kidding? No, no, no. This is the end. Can I take you home with me? I think my dog would actually be a little upset at that. I'm not doing that. That is a family portrait. Your mom isn't even here. I like how all the dogs destroyed <sighs> their stuffed animals. What took you so long, Kel? I sent you off hours ago. How long does it take to get a bunch of sandwiches? Oh my, is that Sunny? It must be! It's so good to see you again, but dear, you look so thin. Have you been eating properly? Just... steak. Here's the stuff you asked for, Mom. You gave the bakery order and pizza order to Kel's mom. <laughs> Hurry, Sunny, let's go upstairs to my bedroom! Oh, just wait a second, young man. Bye, Mom! <laughs> see you in dinner, son. Kel's just like, distraction! Distraction! There's a lot of art in your house. A lot of like what looks like real art and paintings and stuff. Bunch of family photos. Kel sure has a lot of relatives. Look at shrine candles and stuff. Doors locked. It's probably Hero's room. This is like the first house where like doors are locked. <laughs> really, I don't. I don't. No social skills. As I, this is the one bathroom that you're like, do you really have to go now? Really? Like, you just let me go into all these strangers' bathrooms. I want to show you my room first. I can't pee first. Like, seriously, is that like figurines? The bookcase full of action figures and toys. I also don't think I've ever been in a house where there are parents who just like let the action figurines be in the hallway. Unless like they also like action figurines. Don't get me wrong. Like, I have my fair share of nerdy stuff. 
throughout my entire house, but there are a few new additions since you were last year. Holy buckets. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You don't share a room? Oh, did I try to walk into your parents' room? Well, here it is. Make yourself at home. Look, I got a basketball hoop and a boombox, just like I always wanted. Yeah, this must be the 80s. Here, I'll play a song for you. I can't even think of the last time I saw a boombox. <laughs> yep, it's pretty sweet. Mom won't let me play it too loud, though, because she says it's bad for Sally. Who's Sally? Oh, wait. You haven't met Sally yet, huh? <laughs> Guess what, Sunny? I'm a big brother now. What? Sally's my baby sister. My mom will probably bring her downstairs around dinner time. She's really small and really cute. Kel, there's a girl at the door. She says she's here to see you. Oh god, is that Aubrey? Huh, I wonder who that could be. Gee, I wonder. Kel's game console system, it looks well used. Kel, you just have clothes everywhere. Kel's only award, any whole hot dog eating contest participant. Of course, basketball. Kel's work desk? Doesn't look like any work gets done here. And then are these all like heroes things? State Mathematical Olympiad first place. Holy cow. State Spelling Bee first place. State Junior Cooking Competition. Yeah, this is definitely heroes. Hot dog eating first place. An alarm clock for responsible people. Set to be five minutes early. Holy Okay, can I? Thank you. State debate competition. Most improved. Hero's work desk. Very tidy. Not an eraser shaving site. So, like, there's this huge con contrast. Very visibly, because the room is, like, divided. So on the left side, we have Kel. And, like, Kel's... Kel's chaos. And on the left side, we... Left and right. All words today are hard. So on the left side, we have Kel's chaos. And on the right side, we have Hero's neat and tidiness and organization i know i've talked before about heroes like people pleasingness and so much of the time that comes hand in hand with anxiety and so much of the time when we feel anxious we it's like our anxiety says hey you know how you can cope with this with perfectionism and being neat and orderly and tidy and so i wonder if that is also a thing that is showing up here too where hero is so neat and tidy and organized and does so well because it's, it's like how he's trying to cope with all this anxiety. Meanwhile, Kel is not that way. And Kel's just like, I'm just gonna do all the things. Oh, so having a baby in here could be why the door is locked. I didn't click that button. I did not. I was looking. <laughs> um, I also don't know how wise it is to have a door locked if there's a baby in there. <laughs> it doesn't seem wise. Like, if something happened to the baby, like, Nobody can get in there. So I just realized there's like a lot of destroyed. There's a lot, a lot of destroyed stuffed animals. Fancy purse. Look inside. Okay, first off, don't look inside people's stuff. Don't do it. Um, it's a huge invasion of privacy. Having said that, it's a video game, and I'm gonna ignore my own advice. <laughs> Went to dig into my mom's bag for Sunny. I'm just stealing. Her pepper spray? Whoa, my mom had pepper spray. That could come in handy if we run into any trouble. Good thinking, Sunny. You're not you're not gonna stop this. Sunny had a knife earlier, and you took the knife. The pepper spray, you're like, whoa, that's cool. Take that. Good thinking. Oh, not Aubrey. Basil's caretaker. <clears throat> hey, Cal. Hey, Sunny. Sorry for intruding. I was just wondering if you know where Basil is. I thought he might be with you. Basil? Uh, we did see him at the park earlier, but that was a while ago. We did? Oh, yeah, we did. We did. I was like, what? If you see him, can you tell him to come home? I'm really worried about him. Of course, Polly. Wait, wait. So this is mirroring the dream world, where 
Basil's missing, and I'm assuming we're gonna go look for Basil. Of course, Polly will be on the lookout. Thanks, I knew I could count on you guys. Basil's missing today. I have a bad feeling about this, especially with Aubrey and the scooter gang around. Maybe we should try to find him before it gets dark. Can we look for a mom, pretty please? We have your pepper spray. Well, a girl did look awfully worried. So, so Kel's mom keeps using the word girl. So how young is she, that caretaker? Just make sure to be home by dinner. You say that as though Kel has been home on time for anything in this game. Uh, where would Basil be? Uh, well, the scooter gang was up by the pizza, but this is where we saw Basil earlier. Well, in the, the biker gang thing, I was talking about the lake, like behind all these trees. And this is where Basil was too, and they keep hinting at like there used to be a lake here, there used to be a lake here. Man, where... Music stop. That's unsettling. Man, where could Basil be? I don't see him anywhere. Somebody help. Oh god, what is happening? Sunny, did you hear that? I think that was Basil. Oh, Basil, help me. Please. Oh, no. Where is his voice coming from? Hold on a sec. I know this area. Basil's voice is coming from our old hangout spot. Oh. I don't have a knife anymore. I'm pepper spray, though. The entrance should still be somewhere around here. Okay. This looks dangerous. Like, everybody in the town knew that this existed, but they just let the kids hang out here. Yeah, that sounds like the 80s. Oh, no, poor Basil! Help me, somebody! What the heck are you yelling for, Basil? You're making a scene. This place is our secret hideout, or our secret hangout spot. You can't be here because you weren't invited. Dang it, Basil, be quiet. Someone's gonna find this place. Yeah, we're not trying to hurt you. We just want to get out of here. Or we just want you to get out of here. Stock looks like the one that's up north of the, of the uh, trunk, the tree trunk. Where um, Amori was like, I'm afraid you're out. And hey, stop it. What are you doing to Basil? What the? Grumble, grumble. It's Kel and Sunny again. Why do you always show up? I mean, we don't always. This has been like years of us not going anywhere, so it's not really always. How did you even find this place? Oh my gosh, I bet Amazon would have loved Sunny. Oh my gosh, just ordering everything. I don't think Amazon existed in the 80s. Did they? No, no. Come on, Aubrey, we gotta defend our turf. <sighs> Aubrey! Seems kind of closed off now. It's like, we don't know exactly how this happened, but we saw Basil earlier and Basil's like looking in this general direction. I get the impression of like nostalgia. Like Basil hasn't seen Sunny in ages and finally learns that Sunny is leaving. Not finally, but like learns that Sunny is leaving. It's like, I'm gonna go to the spot where like we all used to hang out. And so went there, but didn't know that this like scooter gang has claimed it. I imagine the scooter gang found out about it because of Aubrey. If this is a spot that like the original gang used to hang out at. And so like they've claimed it. Basil doesn't know that because Basil seems extremely anxious. I feel so bad for Basil. And so Basil's like, I'm going to go to the spot, try to feel a little more connected to Sunny since Sunny's leaving. And maybe this idea of like, I'm so anxious that I don't feel like I can actually directly connect with Sunny, but maybe I'll direct, I'll connect with these memories that I have with Sunny. And then, then like the, the scooter gang arrives and starts picking on Basil, just tries to, not picking on, on Basil even, but like tries to get Basil to leave. But Basil is so anxious that these things get interpreted as like direct attacks. And they could have been, to be fair. Um, and then gets paralyzed, doesn't quite know what to do. Um, 
But then... Aubrey's, like, shut down. Aubrey's... Everything about Aubrey has been, like, taken away, right? Like, Aubrey doesn't seem to have the best home life. Aubrey's, um, like, church safe place is taken away by Sunny and Cal. So this idea of, like, let's take them head on, I imagine, wouldn't be the greatest either. But yeah, she's, she's not saying anything about it. Aubrey. Go away, Cal. You're not welcome here. This is our spot. Oh, this is your spot now. Well, this used to be our old hangout spot. Wasn't it, Aubrey? Yeah, so it seems like Aubrey told the rest of them about it. Watch it or we'll mess you up. It seems like they're being weirdly protective of Aubrey. Not weirdly, I guess, but like it's almost like they know that something happened. Fine, if that's how it's going to be, then at least stop bullying Basil. We weren't even doing anything to him. He just started screaming for no reason. Yeah, sure you weren't. Why should I believe you? For telling the truth. Stop being such a self-righteous prick. Come on, guys. Let's make sure this is the last time these two mess with us. That sounds good to me. I'm right behind you, the Maverick. Aubrey... Let's settle this, Cal. If you and Sunny are going to pick a fight with me and my friends, you've got one. Come on, gang. Let's teach them a lesson. <laughs> Their poses. Oh, all of them. Oh, it didn't heal. Oh, I remember what my health situation is. The flies. Jesus. Um, oh, it's the hooligans. Hey. I'm gonna calm down. Attack. <laughs> the wink. Wait. Do I have the <laughs> pepper spray for self defense only? doesn't feel like a good choice. Having said that, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Stop winking. <gasps> 500 damage. Don't do that. Don't don't pepper spray people. In real life. Oh my eyes. Master, I can't see. Uh, please, what trickery is this? Ouch, that hurts. What the heck is this? Pepper spray, really? I mean, it's better than a knife. You two are the worst. I know. Sorry. No, this can't be happening. How could we lose to just the two of them? That doesn't even make sense. I want to go home. Let's just get out of here. You said it. Blame you guys. She's got pepper sprayed. <laughs> How are you going to explain that to your parents? <laughs> you coming, Aubrey? I feel so bad for Aubrey. First, we like take away all of her safe spaces. Her home doesn't seem the greatest. Next, we pepper spray her. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I feel like the difference between Basil and Aubrey at this point is that because like Basil's grandma, like we don't know Basil's parental situation, but it's it's apparently not great enough to, to where like when Basil's grandma is sick, he gets a guardian. So they, they seem to have similarities between the two of them. But I guess the difference seems to be that Aubrey is compensating or like showing these other emotions as anger and lashing out at other people. Whereas Basil comes off as more meek and that makes it easier for people to want to help. 
So it's almost like which one does society see as um, better? Uh, like anger or fear? Um, sometimes when we see someone who seems like meek and they're afraid, it's, it's like a wounded animal. Not that people are animals, but like we want to help them more. Um, whereas with anger, there's often something underneath the anger. Think of it like this iceberg, right? There's there's often anxiety or trauma or hurt or there's something else under it. Oftentimes with anger, it's it's often not just anger, but that's not often what we see. So sometimes when we talk about emotions, we see some emotions as being more desirable than others. And I feel like that's kind of the difference between Aubrey and Basil is that Aubrey seems to have, seems to be displaying all of this hurt and, and anxiety and trauma and all this other stuff as anger, which is considered like more of an undesirable emotion versus Basil comes off as more meek. You know, I had, I had wondered before whether he was manipulating so much of this stuff, but I don't know if he is, but there's, there's, because of his meekness, I think that there's more of a desire to want to protect or help. And so it's, it's all about this idea of like how society sees this stuff. Oh, okay. Catch you later then. Aubrey. Cause I feel like she's just been shit on so much over the past two days this has only been two days it feels longer because of how the game plays out right we have the other world in this world it's been two days can you imagine that happening to you where i mean the home life stuff would have been something that's been happening over a long period of time and then you finally find this sanctuary of a church that word sanctuary was not meant to be like a, a pun in any way you find something that feels safe to you and that's great and then that's taken away from you and then it's like, you're the bad guy. And then you're fucking maced. Like, what? <sighs> and even then, right now, like, Aubrey is portrayed as the bad guy. And the game has very good writing in the sense that the characters that are, like, bad guys are not, they're not bad guys. They're people. Not really bad for Aubrey. Why do you guys keep coming back? I just want you to leave me alone. I like I wouldn't blame her. Like from Aubrey's perspective, like we don't know what actually happened in this park hideout area, which is totally fair. You know, Basil can say one thing, Aubrey can say another. <sighs> Who knows what actually happened? But let's say they didn't actually bully Basil. Let's say that his calling out was a fear response and he cried out out of fear and they didn't actually bully him. Let's say that. They just attack Aubrey. The pepper spray was totally my choice. It, it, it did not seem something like, it did not seem like something that you had to do in the game, right? But we come and we accuse them. We pepper spray them for, for something that they didn't actually do. I mean, being afraid and crying out for support like Basil did, like that is, that's a valid thing in its own way when we have that kind of fear and anxiety. We, and trauma, I guess is a better word for it. Um, we basically learn that there are certain things that help us and these things help us survive. But then the problem is that when we're away from that trauma, traumatizing thing we continue to do those things that helped us survive and those things don't always help us in the rest of the world so calling out for help may have helped basil in other areas of, of his life and that is totally valid but it doesn't always help us in other areas of our life and that's where some like trauma responses kind of um feel like they get us in trouble so like basil having that response i wouldn't necessarily blame him for that because of that the way that trauma works that way but Aubrey having that response too is totally valid because they're like her friends did try to communicate and Kel and Sunny didn't listen. Sunny, why? Why did you show up now? We just want you to stop messing with Basil. What's your deal with him all of a sudden? You used to be friends. We all used to be. Uh, Basil? You think I'm the bully, but you're all messed up too. Oh, where were you when Mari died? Where were any of you? 
Oh, please don't corner him on the dock. And you, you're the worst, Basil. How dare you still show your face to me after what you did? <laughs> I couldn't tell if that step forward was like, like, what was behind that? <laughs> Aubrey, I... Get away from me. <gasps> Can he swim? Shoot. We'll go after him. What the heck, Aubrey? What are you doing? You've taken this way too far. Kel, I don't think we spend the time talking. In this case, I say that as I'm spending the time talking. It's a scripted event, though. Me taking the time talking doesn't actually, like, prolong it. You don't spend the time talking with something like this. You go get him out of the water. <laughs> Not everybody knows how to swim, which I feel like sometimes we take for granted if we do know how to swim. Wait, hold on. I didn't mean to. Sunny, don't worry about Aubrey. I'll keep her busy. Just go help Basil. I don't know if... Oh, but we're afraid of the water. Oh, is this how we learn about... Is this how we get over it? It's like the super extreme exposure work. Do you want to save Basil? Yes! is a silly question. Oh, don't make me go in the water. As out. Uh, oh. Interesting. Like, playing out our fear in this way. I don't know what I expected. A weird delay with everything. Because we're under Mari? Huh. It's like calm music. Oh, the fear stuff. Slowly getting one step closer. It's like a, an interesting way to show like exposure stuff. Like, slowly getting one step closer. Still afraid. Slowly putting ourselves in a situation that makes us feel anxious. I don't like this. the worst thing that the game could say at this point. Something drags you down. Is it Basil? Like, that's usually what happens underwater, right? The person who can't swim is just desperately trying to get to air, so they just grab onto whatever they can. Oh, we can't run, though. Fight, uh, skill. Calm down. Like, that's a big thing that can happen, is, like, listening to Sunny struggle. Oh, that's unsettling. Um, is sometimes when we try to help someone who's drowning, um, we, they sometimes, like, pull us down kind of a thing, just out of, it's not purposeful, spiteful, or anything like that, but just, like, out of those instincts that happen. We don't have air. Focus? Oh, but I don't. Oh, I don't want to... I don't want to attack. I feel like it's Basil! Listen to Sunny Struggle. Steady your heartbeat. Don't be afraid. It's not as scary as you think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, well, that, like, hearing that, like, steady your heartbeat, calm down, like, it makes me think of calm down, but it's not calm down.
You have to keep going. Don't give up, no matter how impossible it seems. You reach out to the voice and remember how to persist. Oops. <laughs> Not attacking. Persist. Heart cannot reach zero for one turn. Sunny persists. So we're getting closer to the surface. We just continue to do persist. Oh, so the fear lines are related to what we're afraid of, right? The fear lines for the ocean, or for swimming, were like seaweed. And the fear lines for the spiders were for spider legs. Compare what the fear lines for heights look like. That, ex that like shows very visually what the fear lines for the water, like why they look the way they did. <sighs> did Sunny know how to swim? Are those the hands from before? Oh my god, that letter? Is that Mari? Kel, maybe you shouldn't have let Sunny go down there. Is that a hero? That would have to be the most perfect timing ever. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hmm. Looks like Basil's breathing is steady, but we need to get him some more warm quickly. Yeah, he's had a rough day. Let's get him home as soon as possible. Wait, where do you think you're all going? That's enough. Don't you think you've caused enough trouble? Come on, guys, we gotta go. What would Hero's perspective be on all of this, though? Oh, we're just leading this group. It looks like Basil's breathing is steady, but we should bring him back home as soon as we can. Okay, we can't go back to talk to Aubrey. Evening. <gasps> Kitty! Okay, this is it for the game. Very far so. <gasps> Kitty, why are there so many cats? It's odd. It's an odd amount of cats. Hazel, what happened? Is he okay? His breathing is stable. He just needs a change of clothes and a warm bed. Okay, I can do that. Quick, come inside. Can you help me bring him to his room? Sure thing. Phew, that was intense. I hope Basil wakes up soon. Uh, this is Grandma's room. You okay? She's also breathing steadily. Hmm. There's nothing new in here. I suppose he's not in the bathroom this time. Hey, Cal. Hey, Sunny. Looks like Basil's gonna be just fine. I heard from Mom that Basil was missing and thought that you two went looking for him. When I was running around the park, I heard some commotion coming from our hangout spot. I guess I got there in the nick of time. So, what was happening back there? Aubrey? She pushed Basil into the lake. What? That was Aubrey back there? <laughs> no way! She wouldn't do that to Basil. I'm sure there was some kind of misunderstanding. She's not the same anymore, Hero. She's become all messed up after you left for college. Aubrey... What happened while I was gone? 
Maybe I should have never left. Yeah, but like, it's not your job to save everybody or help everybody. It's not your fault that this happened. Things could have gotten a lot worse if you didn't show up. You've done all you can. Come on, let's go home. I think that's that's also a really common thing when we have a hard time with people pleasing is we try to do everything for everybody. I mean, if we're putting ourselves last, there's this idea of, oh, I shouldn't go to college. Because, like, what if something bad happens and I could have done something about it? You know, Sunny, you were pretty awesome back there, jumping in the lake to save Basil like that. You also kind of told me to do that. Even if Hero ended up saving the day, I think you deserve some recognition, too. How about a high five? Do you want to high five, Cal? I mean, this one feels different than the other one. Like, the other one was like... He ruined stuff for Aubrey. This one doesn't feel that way. So yeah, yeah, sure, we'll do that. <gasps> did it? Did it with? Or did that work? Okay, I think it worked. I couldn't tell from the animation. <laughs> okay, why is this picnic? Um, blue. So does Basil just go around leaving these orchards? Or um, yeah, orchids. Orchards um, everywhere. So this is just a regular place to save. Oh, blue picnic basket. Nothing like Mari's. Oh, that makes it sadder. Like there's so much memory tied to those specific picnics. I think out here just comes back from college and it's like, oh, let me just save an old childhood friend and then let's go pick up a seashell. <laughs> That's probably the first thing you want to do when you get back from college. Not, you know, unpack, relax. Where are you, seashell child? Um. He is chilling out. Oh. Every time I see, like, the memory stuff, um, I think it's real people. And I'm like, oh, who are you? And it disappears. Um. Seashell girl was on my street. Oh, do I get paid for my work, by the way? I tutored your child. That was the principal's house, right? Oh. Sleek silver scooter. Is this... Van and... <gasps> I just walk in. That's right. Are you just eating dinner or in your house? Of course they're in your house. In their rooms, this is Vans and yeah, this is Snip Snip Lady. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm just gonna walk in. No big deal. You just eating candy in your room? Oh, hey, what's up? Oh, huh, you're so calm. Are you gonna challenge us to a fight or something? No, I don't really have any beef with you. With any of you, me and Kim just always do the same stuff together. I'm one year older than her, but no one believes me because of my beard. <laughs> she's a lot of talk, but she's got a lot of heart in me. I got some big muscles. You flex. Aubrey, why won't you tell me what's wrong? Oh, that's so sad. Ah, grumble, grumble. It's just you two. Aubrey, uh, what makes you think you can barge into people's rooms like this? Your mom let us in. You must have made friends with my mom. <laughs> she lets in anyone who listens to her talk. Sounds like you don't like your mom very much. Okay, bye! Red glasses lady. How do I get paid for my tutoring? I swear it was the street. <laughs> How rude! There's another scooter. Oh! Is that who this lady's daughter is? Biker gangs. <gasps> Charlene. Hello, my name is Charlene. Charlene? I thought your name was Charlie this whole time. Hiya, Charlene. I'm Kel, and this is Sunny and Hero. Hello, everyone.
Huh. So wait, wait, wait. Brayden is processing. So we thought that this was Charlie. That's what Kel said. But that's not so Sunny Sunny has been isolated in his house for like three, four years. And like sees these people in different forms of themselves as he knew them before in this dream world. Because we've seen we've seen stuffed animals from there. We've seen like the, the actual friends. We've seen um, Vance, all these uh, Burley, all these other people, right? There was a Charlene there. So... And it's like very traditional pink girls room. Girls don't have to have pink. Putting that out there. The whole like gender stereotypes thing. Anyways. Um, so... Was the... Like... I wonder if Charlie is trans. And like their mom um it's an older lady so assuming mom because she's a daughter right and her her mom like is unaware or is not supportive um it's like trans man or if they're non-binary love letter who could it be for because we knew Charlene as Charlene. Because that's how Charlene was was showing up. Charlene is the one that had the longer hair that I initially was like, oh my gosh, you look creepy because of like the long hair always makes me think of like the grudge. Um but then like Charlene was super sweet, just like Charlene or Charlie, I don't know their preferred name. Um so it's hard to know, like, what is their preference here? Are they exploring how they feel about this stuff? But it seems like the game is pretty inclusive to include something like this. Hmm. I like it. There's definitely less conversation about this stuff in the 80s. Like, it existed, but just, like... Well, first off, there wasn't internet. Or any remnants of the internet that you got was like dial up internet and good luck finding that stuff. And Google was not the same as it was back in the day. So even if you did, I'm not going where, where I want to go. Even if you did find something, it, it was harder to find because Google, as we know it now, is very intuitive. Um, it knows kind of like what you're searching for. It knows what you're searching for, and it kind of like fills in the blanks with what you're searching for. Um, Google back in the day was not like that at all. And so it, it didn't help you find what you were looking for as easily. You had to be a lot more precise. And so even if we're talking about like this being in the 90s and there was internet, eh, the internet still couldn't help you find what you were looking for to find a, either a sense of community or even like definitions for like what is going on, like where, like how would I identify? What are the words for this? Um, and so this idea of, of being trans in a lo in a small town or non-binary in a small town, um, I feel like it's a lot was a, would have been a lot different than it is now. These things definitely existed, but it, it was harder to find out about them. I don't think I've been in this house at all. Prickly forehead. Can I eat your cake? Oh, a sad slice of cake. Buddy, there's an open phone book on the table. This person seems to be looking for some odd jobs. Oh my gosh, did I take all the jobs? So now there's no jobs for actual, like, adults who need the money? <gasps> I collapsed the economy in this town and now I feel horrible. I feel so bad. I'm sorry. Can I buy them cake? As, like, tribute? Normally, if it's like, it's just locked, it'll say it's locked. And every time I knock, there's one more thing of ellipses. 
I'm gonna be super annoying. I can be good at that and just keep knocking. Not now, Dad! I'm busy! Okay, this is gonna be the whole video. <laughs> Me annoying some teenager. Oh my god, I would have hated this. I would have hated this if my parents just consistently knocked on the door. Oh, you will open this door. I will not concede defeat. Okay, maybe being the bigger person means knowing when to stop. Let's go with that. I think your child's a little stubborn. You feel so bad. I feel like I took all the jobs. I had my son go to the fix-it to buy a new lamp for my living room, but he's taking his sweet time. <laughs> he's always so slow with these things. I wish someone would tell him to hurry up. I don't have all day. You know, I told myself, it's evening. We have Hero, we're just gonna go to their home. No, there's a lot you can do in the evening. Annoy teenagers. Talk to other teenagers. Go back to the hardware store. What? Who are you? I'm meeting up with someone, but they're late. Don't tell me I've been stood up. I have yet to buy apple or orange juice. Oh, look at how neatly these shelves are done. If this gets ruined tomorrow, there's going to be a problem. Which floor lamp? Oh my gosh, this one? Which floor lamp should I get? The pink one? The blue one? The plain one? The fancy one? Why does this even matter? It all looks like trash to me anyway. I hate decisions. I think I'm going to throw up. Who are you? What do you want? Oh, is my mom asking for me? Tell her to wait. I'm the one going out all the way to pick up this floor lamp that I don't even care about. Besides, she's so picky. I don't know why she doesn't just do it herself. What a, what a trashy situation. You like the word trash, don't you? These floor lamps are trash. You're trash. That's rude. Yes, it all makes sense to me now. This world, this world is nothing but trash. Isn't there, like, a recycle cult that you... Like, I think that you would like that. I'm not re recruiting for them. I just, like, that seems like a good fit. Hey, you, if my mom wants her lamb so bad, why don't you get it for her? Pff, I'll take your 50 bucks. I've got better things to do. Lamps. Lamps. Oh, I just, I like, I have to go buy it. Yeah, I, I don't pick up the item to buy it. I just go buy it. A money machine. Where you can buy stuff and fix it yourself. What can I interest you in? I'm gonna buy a lamp. So you want to buy a floor lamp. It's gonna be 50 bucks, so I could just take the money and run. You still want it? Yeah. Thanks for the business, bud. Got a floor lamp. Oh, so I don't choose which one. I just buy one. I've never cooked for a whole party before. Maybe I was too ambitious this time around. Should I get something that is better quality or something with with more quantity? How do I know which brand I should choose? Are green onions and red onions the same thing? No, they're not. No, they're not. Maybe we should have just gotten delivery. Oh, these are the wallpaper feet people. Hey, no need to stress out about this, Karen. I believe in you. I recognize the dab, not the name. Besides, if no one else eats your food, I, you know at least I will. Oh, Sean, you're so sweet. What did I ever do to deserve someone like you? Made for each other and their dabs. Okay, there's nothing else in the store. Uh, just like the orange cat looks hungry. I don't have any fish. <sighs> this cat better fucking appreciate everything I'm doing for it. It's probably just gonna shit on me and call it a gift again. I swear I love cats. <sighs> oh, I don't even know. I really want to 
know what that says. Fish. Yes. Fish. Can't I just buy some tuna? Cat treats. Probably one of those massive things of cat treats. So cute when it bounces away. Trash. Jeez. It's always trash. Now I'm now I have to keep an eye out for these cats. Trash lady. I got trash. I have trash. Oh. I had to go through it first. Okay. Um. What? Is that the son of the lamp, floor lamp lady? D did he really join the recycle cult thing? Brothers and sisters, we all must accept that we are trash. Yet, although we may be trash, as long as we remain biodegradable, we may yet be saved. Oh, jeez. I was kidding. What am I doing? Uh. I am sensing an evil presence coming. Oh, this is your home from inside my home. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I can never be too careful. Hey, I'll go inside first. Oh, I can literally go inside. I have knocked on this door accidentally a lot. Is this a literal church inside this home? <sighs> Red juice in a glass. It smells kind of like grapes. That's wine. That's wine, Sunny. A holy book. I mean, if your family is super into something, be it religion or something else, and you're not into it, I can see why you'd want to create your own sense of identity by doing something different. Hence why the Maverick has dyed their hair and all of that. This is... Is this literally the same music, too, as the church? <laughs> is this the Mavericks room? A wide tooth comb in front of a mirror. The mirror has sticky notes all over it. Arc, shoulder, back, 15 degrees and more. Remember to flex all fingers when posing. Show one eye, only when provoked. Ugh. Yeah, this is definitely the Maverick. Bunch of small figurines kept in surprisingly good condition. It's about as messy you'd rate it a 3 out of 10. Bunch of small figurines. Oof. These. That, the holy book wasn't what I was clicking on. But like a Virgin Mary? Is there religious stuff even in the bathroom? Oh, there's a cross. There's a Bible in the bathroom. This is the one room that isn't like super religious. Makes me suspicious. Cardboard cutouts of a pair of twins. There's something stuck on the back. You find a note. It seems we have gone missing. We couldn't have gone too far. Find us, dear little brother. Sign Daphne and Bo and your lovely older siblings. What? Seriously? You checked under the table, but you didn't find anything of interest. What? Why would I? Is this a weird scavenger hunt? National baking competition. First place. This trophy is a replica made to be perfectly symmetrical to the one on the other side. What? Music and throughout the entire house has changed now. You turn over the rug and find two fluffy pillows. So is this 
literally a scavenger hunt throughout the house. There's a note on the back. This is the oldest trick in the book. I can't believe you would actually fall for this. Signed, Daphne and Bowen, your lovely older siblings. What is going on? How weird is this? No wonder the Maverick is, first off, trying to create his own sense of identity, but it's also like, something feels sketchy about this. You're not, like, under his bed, are you? Boo! Haha! <laughs> we got you good, didn't we? It's just a twin and the other twin. Hey, wait a second. You're not our darling little brother. Hmm. Your little brother's too cool for us now, isn't he, Bowen? He doesn't even have time to play games with his love loving older siblings anymore. Like, how much teasing has the Maverick received from his family? Yes, Daphne, it is very regrettable. We barely got get any time off work, and when we do, little Michael is never around to play with us anymore. Why would he want to? Why would he want to? This is your version of playing? It's unfair, isn't it, Bowen? Life is so cruel. Well, that's fine. Now we have some new friends, though I'm not exactly sure what they do. Entertain us, dear friends. Nope. Yes, entertain us! Ah, uh, I see you have a pet rock, too. Would you perhaps like to clash? Yes. Mmm, confident, are we? You won't win so easily. Pop chip. Let us show them our power. We'll just go finish up Hero's stuff. I told myself. Nope. Victory? Mm, yes. It seems that we have won. Excellent. Well, this is all very fun, but we get bored quite easily. Come, brother. Let us think of more fun games to play. Goodbye, new friends. This has been pleasant. Huh? Hey, uh, Maverick? Oh, so you have conquered the great evil. What did it cost you? I can still see the pain in your eyes. My brother and sister are a real drag, aren't they? Everyone here is the same. I want to challenge them again. Nope, no, I can't. I have to draw the line somewhere. Um... Whose house is this? Oh, the, the blue-haired girl. That's the thing I wanted to do still. I'm really tempted to turn off his TV. Um, she's over here. Oh, hey, you found a seashell. Yes. Wow, it's such a cute one. Thank you. And now my friend Basil got pushed in the water for it. Hey, no peeking. What am I supposed to do? Okay, so that's done. I have, there's so many things that have popped up because of evening time. I'm not even sure what all I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, the floor lamp, speaking of which. Hello, fashionable one. You gave the floor lamp to fashionable mom. Oh my, what a nice floor lamp. Thank you, you have impeccable taste. I know. Hmm, but where's my son, Billy? Did he go off on one of his tantrums and run off again? Mm-hmm. He's so temperamental. I wish he wouldn't make such a big deal out of everything all the time. Anyway, you're very thoughtful for getting the lamp for me. Please come over anytime and make a mean cup of coffee. You're just gonna give coffee to kids? Your house is nice. My coffee machine is right in the kitchen. Careful, it's pretty strong. I so like it. It's a lot of creamer and sugar. <laughs> What does coffee do? Bitter bean juice. We just drink it. I can't make more? I'm gonna explore your house. Uh. Oh. Short hair girl. I'm thinking of writing my crush a letter to tell him how I feel. Do it. Hmm. Alright. Just, like, Charlie and this person crushing for each other. Intimidating girl, I just came back from college today. I miss the city already. It's just way too quiet here. There's a lot of beds in one room. 
how many people are in this house? There's the son, and then the two daughters, and the mom? These rooms are very opposite. <laughs> we have, like, this room that is, it is, like, this implication that it's grimy when there's... It is the recycle just trash can for recyclables. Um, the boys' room, I'm assuming, has this implication that it's dirty when it's all like um, it has that green filter on it, and the girls' room is just like it's cramped, but it looks tidy. Hector, what? do you want to play with Hector? <gasps> I can play with Hector. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is it. This is all this is all we need in this video. Just petting a good boy and playing with a good boy. Oh yeah, Cal, your dad came home from the hardware store. Cal, Hira, where have you two been? It's so late, I've been worried sick. Sorry, Mom, we got held up. But the good news is we found Basil and he's safe. <laughs> all of you know, I spent all week preparing the chicken roast for tonight's dinner. Then why did you have us get the pizza? And? It's gotten cold. Oh, Mom. Please don't cry. Don't worry, Cal. This is what microwave- or don't worry, Mom. This is what microwaves are for. Oh, my poor dinner. There, there, honey. Cheer up. Today's a special day. There's no need to be sad. Look, you're always back from college. It's good to see you back, champ. Thanks, Dad. Oh, your dad is right. This is no time for sniffles. It's good to see you back, Hero. We've all missed you so much. Yeah! Oh, it sounds like Sally's awake. I'll go get her. I hope Sally's not in the locked room. Come on, boys. You must be hungry. Go and get yourself some dinner. Cool. Let's go grab some dinner and heat it up. It's literally a dinner. We got a home-cooked meal, but it's cold. We just took all of it. That's not... You, you gotta leave some for others, Sunny. You can heat it up using the microwave. Look, Hero, we got your favorite. Some chocolate chip cookies and a big ol' Hero sandwich. Aw, how sweet. But it's exactly the same as last year. Hero looks like he's really awkward about that. Like, maybe he has a hard time telling his parents that he doesn't want the same thing? We don't know if he actually told them that to be fair. It's really weird that you guys are just like watching. <laughs> Whew, now that everything's calmed down, we can finally relax a bit. So good to see you again, Sunny. It really has been way too long. Oh, and it's good to see you again too, Kel. So Sunny, I heard from mom that you're moving away soon. That sounds so exciting. Yeah, he is. Tomorrow's going to be his last day with us. Moving away seem kind of nerve wracking now, but it really isn't so bad once you get used to it. I think it would be good for you, Sunny. You learn a lot moving to a new place, and it's nice to have a fresh start. I'm a little sad to see you go, but it'll be okay as long as we keep in touch. We sure have a lot of memories together. Sometimes I miss those days, lazing around, eating food, drinking juice. Yeah, we did everything together. Went to the park, the lake, the beach, but honestly what I miss most is hanging out at your place, honey. You guys had everything. A big TV, all the newest toys, a grand piano. We haven't seen a grand piano. And like, grand pianos are fucking huge. You can't just like, take them out of a house easily. So if they had a grand piano in the house, I imagine it's still there. Could it be in the locked room? Cause didn't they, like that, and that was on, it, that's been in some of the things that we've seen. Like in the, the little hints that we've seen. And of course your very own treehouse. Yeah, the treehouse. Treehouse is awesome. I wonder if it's still there. Is it sunny? I don't know. We don't go outside. A lot of avoidance of that. 
Looks like the food's done. Let's eat in the living room. We can continue chatting there. Hmm. By the way, Hero, Basil gave Sunny his photo album yesterday. Did you want to see it? You have Basil's photo album on you? Sure, let's look through the, the album while we eat dinner. <laughs> Very dramatic whipping out of the photo album. We've already seen all these, though. Yeah, so we don't have to... Sorry to take lessons again, so we can play at recitals with the sister Mari. So exciting. We don't have to see these again. Unless there's something that I missed! I don't think so. These all seem the same. We didn't get new ones, did we? Yeah, no, there's nothing new. It's too bad that some photos are missing. Aubrey stole the album from Basil, but we got it back. Maybe she has the rest of the photos. Hey, hero, what's up? Are you okay? Yeah, it's just that, well, Mari isn't in any of these photos. Yeah, that's true. She's in some of the photos in the dream world, but not these. So are those the photos that were taken? The ones that have Mari in them. You're right, she isn't. Still, this album really brings back some good memories. Things were a lot simpler when we were kids. I mean, this is the way it usually works. I have a favor to ask. Do you think you could let us see your house one more time before you leave? Oh, that feels like a lot. Like, there's already so much about the house that, like, Sunny already avoids. And there's, at the same time, so much about Sunny's friends that is so complicated then to combine them feels like whoo oh that's a good idea but you got to convince mom first she's probably going to be kind of mad about you not spending enough time with her and stuff dude it's like an hour probably to go through a house how could she be mad about an hour you know how she is well plus she'd be busy with the kiddo Whew, what a mess that was. Sally made a big doo-doo. She's all clean now. <laughs> Peekaboo. Hey there, Sally. Peekaboo. Oh, you made the kid cry. <laughs> Stop it, Kelly. You're scaring her. Um, so, uh, hey, Mom. So, like, that anxiety about asking for something for him... We were wondering if we could go hang out at Sunny's house today, since he's moving away soon. Oh, but you just came back, and it's already so late. What about spending time with your mom? I'm going to be here for the rest of the summer, and Sunny is leaving the day after tomorrow. Yeah, so like... We have plenty of time to catch up. I think it's okay for Hero to spend some time with Cal and Sunny. I haven't seen Sunny around for a long time now. It's been a while since the boys have had a chance to catch up, or to hang out. I say we should let them. <sighs> Fine then. You boys can have your fun. Well, but plus, depending on how old Hero is, if Hero's an adult, right? If Hero's over 18, assuming this is America and all that stuff, all those assumptions, technically Hero can go do what he wants. I think the part that, like, Kel's mom would have a say in is this idea of, like, you can legally go do whatever you want because you're an adult, but you can't then stay at my home or eat my food. Because otherwise, she can't stop him if Hero's an adult. But Hero has to wash the dishes for me for the next week. So wait, wait, wait. It's this idea of like... Like, the whole point of parenting is to... Like, teach your kids things so that way they, they have a life that is better than what you had. So, um, like, that's the whole point of parenting. And that means that once they get to a certain age... Ideally, you teach your kid to, to be an adult, and you treat them like an adult, which is sometimes a transition that parents have a hard time with. They I bobbed my desk. <laughs> That's sometimes a transition that parents have a hard time with. Sometimes parents have a hard time seeing their kids 
as adults, even though they are adults, and then they don't treat them like adults, and that's kind of like a weird transition, and some, some parents never really make that transition. They always treat their, their kids like kids, even though they're adults. I mean, like, you can be 30 years old, and your, your parent still teaches, or treats you like you're 16 or something, which doesn't really help with, like, your relationship with your parents or all those other things, but... So, when I picture somebody who's going off to college, I picture someone who's at least 18. Because, um, at least when I was going to school, you know, you, you traditionally go to school to go to college when you're, like, a, a bachelor's degree. You go to college when you're 18 to 22. <laughs> Not great at math. And so, Hero has to be at least 18. Like, has to be an adult and you're... Like, if he's not living at home already, he is already adulting. Like, the whole reason that he's visiting is to do a courtesy, technically. Although, uh, depending on his living situation, if he's living in, uh, like, a dorm or an apartment that's provided by the college, they may not provide it over the summer. That depends on the college. So, all of that to say that, you know, I've talked about heroes people-pleasing before. And people pleasing often starts as parent pleasing. Sometimes we have parents who get, um, who are struggling with their own mental health stuff or just struggling in general because we are all, sometimes we look at our parents as though they have no flaws, but parents are people too, and we are all growing and learning and changing as we go throughout life, including parents too. And sometimes what that means is that kids see that and they pick up on it and then they feel like they have to do everything they can for their parents because, like, you know, kids love their parents. And they want their parents to be happy. And sometimes the way that that plays out is kids want their... Kids become parent pleasers. They want to do everything they can to help a parent who's struggling. And then as they get older, that becomes people pleasing in general. And so I guess... The reason why I'm saying all of this is because I am seeing in this dynamic a an adult who has the capacity to live on their own and to do a very adult things and a mom who almost uses guilt trips to try to keep him home and like keep him maybe like attached to her and this this could be reaching and i'll fully recognize that i've seen very little interactions between them but like she has a kid who's very young who like already needs so much attention from her and it's not like she's saying like hero oh my gosh i could use your help with the kid it's just like i want you home and he's gonna have plenty of time home with her and there's also this fact that no matter what happens in his life she will always be his mom. So, like, there's always going to be that attachment there. But it's almost like she's saying, you can't go, you can't spend three days, it's less than three at this point, you can't spend three days with someone else. Like, what about me? Like, that kind of guilt tripping. Um, and that can make us, like, when we see that as kids, that can make us want to people, please. Because we're like, you're so right. I need to put my needs last for you. Um, and so... That's a really hard dynamic when we grow up in homes like this because we have a hard time knowing when we can actually speak up for ourselves, when we can actually do things. Sure, I guess I can do that. And I mean, like, that is more understandable too for why there would be like that anxiety. Like the, the shaking, the character shaking seems to be like an anxiety sign, right? And that can, like when I first saw it, it's like, why would you be anxious about just asking to spend an hour, right? I'm picturing this like, you do a walk through the house, and it's like, oh look, it's the same as it was. Or even spending an extra day with someone, it's like, why would you be anxious about that? You've been in college for months. Of course a day is no big deal compared to that. But that would explain a lot. If, 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 sh if the mom is guilt tripping so much, or even just guilt tripping enough that you feel like you can't ask for those things, that, I feel like, would say a lot about their dynamic. All right, you're free to go. Come on, Stella, let's leave your mean old brothers alone. And even that, like, why is that? Why do you have to say that they're mean just because they're going to do their own thing? The whole purpose of parenting is to help them thrive on their own, even if it means without you as a parent. Even though that can be so incredibly hard as a parent, 
that's the point is that they can be happy and healthy. Oh, this sounds bad, but like the whole point is that they can be happy and healthy without you. Because if kids can be happy and healthy without their parents, that means that they have the ability to cope and deal on their own. And that's a great thing. And sometimes I feel like parents look at that and it's like, oh, they don't need me. But that's the point. Yeah, it hurts. It like it hurts to watch your kids go off to college and to go off to school. But like, <sighs> if you've done your job as a parent, that means they'll still want, like, like that's part of what you want. You know, that, that's part of it. But it doesn't mean that they won't come back to you and they won't talk to you and all those other things. Sometimes we see it as mutually exclusive, but two things can be true at the same time. <sighs> they don't want anything to do with us, do they, Sally? Like, again, the guilt tripping. Oh, mom. Ooh. Don't fret about your mom too much, Hiro. She just messes with you, that's all. And, like... There's this this culture in this family where it's like, we'll just call it a joke, and that makes it all okay. But that that doesn't undermine what was said. She feels better after she calms down. You guys go off and do your thing. I'll make sure she's okay. And, like, the dad seems like a buffer. Like, it seems like in this family, the, what the dad does is he tries to, to um, stave off the things. He tries to let the kids do what they want to do, and she tries to... Or he tries to... Um, like help the mom feel better like his job is like a peacekeeper it seems like in this family but then the bad part about that too is like we tend to um, we we whatever family we grew up with and whatever dynamics we had in the family we grew up with that tends to be what we end up playing out in our adult relationships just because we don't know what else it should look like <laughs> it's like what else can we do in families so then for Kel and Hero are they going to seek out partners who are like their mom because they don't know what else relationships should look like are they going to play out the same peacekeeper -y type role as their dad because they don't know what else relationships could look like um I don't know Hey, so I'm really glad that we were able to hang out and everything. They also be really bad for leaving mom all alone, right? Because people pleasing often starts out as parent pleasing. Before we head to your house, let's go to fix it and get some flowers for her. I know she'll really appreciate that. Oh, hero. Always a mama's boy. I mean, it's not also like a mama's boy thing. A lot of times it's just this idea that like as the older child, you see more of this stuff and then you probably fulfill more of that role of trying to help a parent. And then it's almost like a protective kind of thing. So like younger kids don't see it as much of that. And then they don't feel the need to do as much people pleasing. Um, I feel like this is a good place to stop. I feel like we've had a lot of conversations about... Um, uh, like people pleasing and, and families and stuff like that. And I wonder, it's a lot. Um, I feel the need to add this idea that just because I talk about this stuff, this is super general comments. Whatever your particular situation is, doesn't mean that this exactly applies to you. And I feel like that's so important. You know, I'm only talking about this because I see that this could be a possibility in the video game doesn't mean that it applies to you in particular in your life <laughs> um but i do wonder what your guys's thoughts are on the things that i mentioned about you know families and people pleasing and things like that i'd love to hear your thoughts in general about the game and how it's going <sighs> so many of these conversations are really hard because again i've mentioned this before but it's really hard to comment on a video game just because I can't ask them like hey how was your family life hero whereas with my clients I, I actually can ask that question I can get feedback in video games are very one-sided I am only getting whatever feedback the writers are giving me and I can't ask for anything else but it is still really interesting to see some of these kind of dynamics play out um, but I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts on all of this are and I will see you guys in the next video